Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, let me start uh, by thanking uh, Massey Alinejad for joining us today. Massey, it's good to see you again, and we Pleasure. appreciate that. Senator Cardin, thank you very much uh, for your leadership on this issue. Uh, we're going to talk this morning about a, a really important topic, and this is bipartisan legislation to impose sanctions which are meant to hold Iran accountable for actually targeting an American citizen on U.S. soil while our diplomats are discussing sanctions relief for Iran in Vienna. Let me, let me give a, a little bit of an overview. Uh, Iran's malign behavior at home and abroad and its effort to undermine international norms is a huge challenge for the United States and a threat to the United States. What do we know about the regime in Iran? We know that they are the world's greatest state sponsor of terrorism. They support terrorist proxies and militias that have ramped up attacks on U.S. personnel and allies, including in recent weeks and months. We know they continue to blackmail the U.S. with a nuclear weapons program, and they are now on the verge of enriching uh, to nuclear weapons levels. Uh, we know they hold foreign citizens hostage as bargaining chips. We know they crush peaceable assemblies and freedom of expression. And just this month, the regime violently suppressed water protests in an Iranian city. Um, but we're here specifically to talk about Massey's story. Uh, it's an amazing story. In July, Americans woke up to, to learn about Iranian terror on U.S. soil. I'm just uh, humbled and grateful to be joined here today by Massey. She is a courageous Iranian-American journalist and activist who is the target of Tehran's kidnapping plot. She's an American hero. She came out of hiding to be here today. That's how she has to live. The Department of Justice unveiled that Iranian spies conspired to seize Massey from her home in Brooklyn and take her on a boat to Venezuela. This is the Department of Justice. From there, they would force her back to Iran, where she would undoubtedly have been executed, just like other Iranian dissidents whom Iran has kidnapped from other foreign countries. Never before has this regime in Tehran tried to abduct a U.S. citizen on U.S. soil. This is a brazen escalation by the regime in Iran, and it requires a proportionate response. It's worth asking, why is the regime so afraid of Massey? that they have to attempt these unbelievable measures? Well, there's a reason. It's because she's the voice of Iran's voiceless, particularly Iranian women in their fight against compulsory hijab. She was born in Iran. Massey grew up to be a successful journalist exposing corruption until she was expelled from the country in 2009. In 2014, she started a viral Facebook campaign where women in Iran would take pictures of themselves without the mandatory headscarves, and then they would send the images to Massey, who would post them. Her campaign inspired a protest movement in Iran, a protest movement for freedom. And what does it tell you about the Iranian regime that they're so afraid of women's hair? But Massey has inspired countless Iranians to defy the regime's restrictions on speech, on dress, and political activity. She's been an advocate for personal freedom. The regime tries to silence her with death threats and pressure on her family. Her sister was forced to denounce her on state TV. They arrested her brother. They harass her mother. But despite the intimidation, Massey continues to fight for the basic freedom of the Iranian people. We need to hold Iran accountable for this outrageous behavior. Despite the fact that her case received global attention this past summer, lethal threats against Massey and her family have actually increased. She's under constant FBI protection. And Massey is one of the countless victims of Iran's ongoing transnational repression to silence dissidents and journalists. Clearly, Iran is not getting the message that this malign behavior, especially against a U.S. citizen on U.S. soil, is not going to be tolerated. And that's why Senator Cardin and I have teamed up to introduce the Massey Alinejad Harassment and Unlawful Targeting Act to hold Iran accountable and to deter further attacks. What our bill would do is it would impose mandatory sanctions against agents of Tehran who target critics of the Iranian regime, and it would 
dries up Tehran's sources of financing transnational repression by authorizing secondary sanctions on banks that do business with those designated agents. As the administration is discussing economic relief with Iran this week in Vienna, I'm glad to be here with Senator Cardin working to hold Iran accountable and to demonstrate that human rights and U.S. national security interests have to be paramount and cannot be sacrificed for a flawed nuclear deal. This is what America is all about. There is no country in the world but the United States that has advanced and will continue to advance the moral leadership required to provide hope for those around the world who are threatened by the kind of authoritarianism that we see governing Iran. Senator Biden. I'm sorry. Senator Biden. Sorry. Make it be president. <laughs> Miss Aline Job, first of all, thank you so much for your courage, uh, for everything that you have done to stand up for human rights. We're not surprised that the Iranian government uh, is horrible in regards to its oppression of its citizens. We know about the extrajudicial imprisonments that they do just because a person wants to stand up for the truth or wants to disagree with the government. There are hundreds, if not more, that have been put in prison, been killed as a result of their beliefs and as a result of exercising their right to speak out against government action in a peaceful way. But you put a face on it. It, it, we need to understand that each one of these individuals is a person who has a life. And the brazen attempt to kidnap you here in the United States of America by a foreign government just because you speak out on behalf of women's rights, on behalf of human rights, on behalf of international rights, we have to speak out for you and for all those who have been intimidated, imprisoned, and harassed, and lost their life as a result of the Iranian government. Senator Toomey, thank you for your leadership on this issue. Senator Toomey is taking the lead on this because of his commitment for basic rights. And I agree completely with Senator Toomey about Iran. We spent a lot of time concerned about their nuclear program, as we should. We have to recognize that Iran is violating their commitments to the international community in regards to trying to become a nuclear weapons state. And we've taken action against them for that, and we'll continue to do that. But we also have to recognize that Iran is an international sponsor of terrorism and has violated international commitments as it relates to human rights of its own people that are living in Iran as well as trying to reach outside of its borders in order to kidnap individuals and to violate their rights. That cannot go unchallenged. And that's why I'm proud to join Senator Toomey in saying that the United States must exercise leadership on this issue. This legislation will do exactly that. It will target those that are targeting the individuals who are speaking out on behalf of human rights, on behalf of civil liberties, on behalf of women's rights, on behalf of disagreeing with their government. We target those individuals. And yes, we use sanctions, including the Magnitsky sanctions, because we know that these individuals are corrupt. And they don't want to hide their corrupt resources in their own country. They want them here in America. We've got to deny them the right to use our banking system and to visit our country. That's why we use the Magnitsky. They're individual sanctions against the perpetrators of these violations. And quite frankly, we want a message not only to the Iranian government. We want a, a, a message to all authoritarian rulers globally that if you violate basic international rights, if you dare to attempt to come to our nation and kidnap an American citizen, there will be dire consequences that we want to make that very, very clear. And that's exactly what this legislation does. And that's why, Senator Toomey, I thank you for your leadership on this issue. I'm proud to be your co-pilot on this. 
We're going to look for an opportunity not only to get this bill through the committee and through the Senate, but to the President for signature so that we can protect the innocents, that we can protect those who are heroes that are standing up for the rights of others. I'm proud to be your partner on this bill. Thank you very much. Thank you so Merci. much. Thank you. I appreciate it. First of all, I want to thank Senator Toomey, Senator Cardin, for such a bipartisan legislation. I strongly believe that human rights violation and what the Islamic Republic is doing to Iranian people and other dual national citizens should be a bipartisan issue. And thank you for Democrats and Republicans get united to take a strong action. But a, a tiny correction. I want to say that this is Islamic Republic, and we are going to punish the Islamic Republic, not Iran. Iran is being hostage by the Islamic Republic for 42 years. We are talking about the Islamic Republic, who recently opened fire at the protesters, innocent farmers in the city of Isfahan. And more than 20 innocent people have been blinded. And a lot of the mothers of those people who got killed in Iran protest, they're actually taking action and supporting all those who got blinded in Iran protests. Thank you so much for protesting against the Islamic Republic and supporting Iranian people. Most of, you know, most of you know that uh, the FBI stopped the kidnapping plot, and you think that was the end? It was not. Twice since July when the FBI stopped uh, the kidnapping plot, I was forced to live in safe house and move from my home. So my life is upside down because of the Islamic Republic. As far as the Islamic Republic is in power, even here in America, I don't have a normal life. And today, I had to left uh, the safe house and come to Washington, DC. And why? I'm not a criminal. My crime is just give voice to Iranian voiceless people, to the protesters. 1,500 people got killed in Iran protest last no two years ago in November, bloody November protest, and their families are in prison being threatened not to send videos to me, but they're still brave enough to protest and speak up. To the women in Iran, brave enough to protest against gender apartheid. And to the people of Iran who say no to Islamic Republic, and that's my crime. And that scares the regime in Iran, and that's why they're continuing their threat to get rid of me. But it's not just me. When you heard of the kidnapping plot, you thought, it's like a scary movie. It's like a fiction book, no? But taking hostage, kidnapping, murdering, is in the DNA of the Islamic Republic. It's in the nature of the Islamic Republic. According to Brumand Institution, which is a highly respected human rights organization, more than 500 Iranians and dual national citizens were killed or kidnapped by the Islamic Republic abroad. Can you believe that? For, for 42 years, 540 people got killed or kidnapped by the Islamic Republic. And this legislation is not just about me. It's about all the dissidents and it's about all the Iranians who live outside Iran and want to practice their freedom of speech, like all Americans. So I want to say that without, I mean, it's very important, without Democrats and Republicans getting united and calling your allies, the Europeans, we're not going to get successful. I want to call all the freedom fighters, all the democratic country, See the dictators from Russia, from China, from Islamic Republic, Venezuela, they're all united. All the democratic countries must get united and take a strong action against the terrorists and against the Islamic Republic. Do not bury human rights under nuclear deal. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Um, any questions? Uh, First part for you, Senator Jimmy, and second part for Senator Cardin. Uh, as Massey mentioned, more than 500 Iranian dissident journalists have been kidnapped by the regime during the past 42 years. Um, and now the plot that has been foiled by the FBI um, has revealed that the Iranian regime wanted to also abduct Massey. 
of what are you, what message are you trying to send to Tehran, and do you think this legislation would uh, curb the Iranians' um, desire to go outside their borders and kidnap uh, the um, Iranian dissidents? And for Senator Cardin, uh, your um, um, party, uh, the Democrats, have been supporting Biden administration throughout the talks with the Iranian regime. Um, um, Anthony Blinken the, the, um, said yesterday that he thinks that the Iranians are just going to drag these negotiations and within the next few days, uh, he would know that if the Iranians are serious when they say they want to curb their nuclear program. What do you think the response should be from the US government if the Iranians um, uh, you know, stay on their stance and do not want to limit their nuclear program? So, so I'll take the first one, and uh, uh, you know, we refer to the Iranian regime, um, but let's be clear, the regime consists of individuals. What this legislation does is it requires the State Department to identify the individuals that are guilty of carrying out this repression, uh, and then, and this is an important new element, uh, banks doing business with those people would be subject to sanctions. They are um, not mandatory sanctions, but it would be available to impose sanctions on financial institutions. And let me tell you why, uh, Senator Cardin actually made it clear why this is uh, important. Um, not only do these people repress their, their own people, not only do they engage in this malign activity, but they usually have a way of, through their own personal corruption, of getting some of their money out of Iran into either American or European uh, banks so that their fortune is safe and secure outside of their own regime. Well, let me tell you, there's no um, mainstream, no Western um, bank in the world that wants to be subject to U.S. sanctions. And so it creates a powerful incentive for reputable institutions around the world not to do business with anybody who shows up on this list. Is that going to be sufficient to modify their behavior? I hope so. There's no guarantees. But at a minimum, we have to take this step to make it very, very clear just how outrageously unacceptable their behavior has been. And if I can just add on and respond to your second point, the Magnitsky sanctions were really a game changer because, and I was involved with that with the late Senator John McCain. It was bipartisan when we adopted the Magnitsky sanctions. Because as Senator Toomey says, it's individual. It's not, it's not sectorial against the government. It's individual against the perpetrator. And when you're trying to prevent certain activities, a lot of actors say, well, they'll hide behind their government. Here you can't hide behind your government. The consequences are going to be personal to you. So it has been extremely effective. And if you don't, I could just also point to the summit meeting between President Trump and President Putin where the Magnitsky sanctions were top on Mr. Putin's list. So we, we know they work. We know they have impact. And the, the best way of, of demonstrating that is that the, uh, those that are in danger will always uh, encourage us to strengthen the Magnitsky-type sanctions because they know they really do help work. They're important. In regards to the Iranian nuclear program, everyone agrees that our first options are always to do it through uh, uh, an agreement, through diplomacy. Uh, we recognize that uh, that is a, the only way to permanently deal with this is through uh, uh, an agreement that is effective in preventing Iran from becoming a nuclear weapon state. The only way you can get there is through maximum pressure on Iran. Maximum pressure on Iran. And there are lots of ways you can do that. And I, I know that those of us in Congress have been united and giving the tools to multiple administrations so that they can provide maximum pressure against an Iranian regime, Islamic that Republic. This Islamic Republic, that is uh, uh, committing these types of offenses, including their nuclear program. Yes, sir. Uh, Mark Rogers, Jewish Insider. Thank you, Senator. Um, you mentioned a couple of times um, the fact that obviously the um, negotiations in Vienna are happening now. Um, Senator Cardin, you just mentioned sort of the need for maximum pressure. Do you folks see this as sort of th this legislation is playing some sort of role in the negotiations that are ongoing, influencing them in some way? Is this sort of an attempt to, to signal to whether it be the administration or to other parties in negotiations that 
you know, there is not unanimous support in the United States for withdrawing sanctions? So I'll just speak for myself. My, my purpose in this is not to try to have secondary uh, effect on negotiations that are underway. I am deeply skeptical about the negotiations that are underway. I will, you know, acknowledge that. But the message I want to send is to the Iranian regime, to, to the bad actors in Tehran who are you know, guilty and complicit in the outrageous behavior. And I might point out, as you know, the, one of the areas I had concern with the JCPOA is it was limited to the nuclear issues, didn't deal with the other issues, and I raised that at the time as one of my major concerns. So I am pleased that we are now dealing with other aspects of nefarious activities by the current regime. Any other questions? Yeah. Well, uh, as, as you know, there are a lot of ways uh, to do this, um, but we've got bipartisan support. I think we're going to have extremely broad support within the Senate. So we will look for a suitable opportunity. Maybe it's a, a legislative vehicle that's uh, uh, very likely to pass. There, there are a lot of ways to do this, but I am cautiously optimistic given uh, the uh, early bipartisan support and what I think will be a broad consensus that we'll be able to get this done. Any other questions? Uh, sent out from our audience channel. Will you see other uh, bipartisan legislations in the future that are on from uh, committing this uh, malign activities in other places in the world, like in Yemen, uh, where they support Houthis uh, against the who would use the peace process? So, uh, for myself, uh, just speaking for myself, uh, this is going to be my focus. Uh, so, uh, I'll, I'll focus on this. I'm not taking anything else off the table, but for me, for now, I'd, I'd like to get this across the goal line. I want to just put a plug in for some of my Republican colleagues, because we are working across party line on many issues dealing with the advancement of human rights. Uh, I chair the U.S. Helsinki Commission. Senator Wicker is the uh, Senate, uh, Republican chair of that commission. We are laser focused on advancing human rights legislation in the Congress of the United States. There are no less than, I think, four or five major provisions in the National Defense Authorization Act that deal with all bipartisan. So there is this bipartisan commitment in Congress to advance uh, America's leadership on tools to, to advance human rights. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you for